Now we think we can run the respective t-test as long as we know which one to use, either pair samples t-test or independent samples t-test, depending upon the relationship between the groups being compared. However, it is not as straightforward as we wish them to be. Um, the t-test we have talked about so far is one of the uh, parametric tests. Um, the parametric test makes certain assumptions about the parameters of the population distribution from which the sample is drawn. So this is often the assumption, uh, assumption that the uh, population data are normally distributed, and which is known as normality assumption. And when the assumptions are met, then we can run the respective parametric t-test. However, if any of the assumptions are violated and we run the test uh, by just ignoring um, the, the violation, then the resulting stats um, and the, uh, the respective p-values will be inaccurate, uh, which will lead to the wrong conclusion. On the other hand, uh, non-parametric uh, tests are dis distribution assumption free, and as such can be used for non-normal data. So in case uh, the normality assumption is violated, then uh, we can um, switch to the respective non-parametric test to achieve only the significant testing. So um, here are the assumptions you need to check before you can run the independent samples t-test. So the, uh, the first assumption is that your data uh, for both groups that you are trying to compare uh, should be measured at least at the interval level, right? Because you need to, you need to be able to calculate the mean. And this is actually the same for the, um, the dependent samples, the pair samples. But for independent samples, we have uh, two other assumptions you need to check. The first uh, is the normality assumption. So the both data sets uh, should be normally distributed, as um, you can see from this picture. So just let's just assume that any symmetrical um, distribution is normally distributed. So here the distributions are normally distributed. Um, that's what um, um, is um, presented here. So um, the x1 bar is the sample mean of x1, and x2 bar is the sample mean of the second group. So both of the data um, should be normally distributed. And the second assumption is what's called equal variance assumption. So both sets of data should be similar in terms of variances or the spread, right? So the spread is represented by uh, the width of each um, distribution. So even though they, they are just, uh, you know, different distributions, as long as they are normally distributed and also their spread is kind of a, a similar each other, then you can run the parametric independent samples t-test. So to illustrate um, this assumptions kind of a further, so these graphs um, show distributions of data from two independent groups. And there's a, at least one violation of the two assumptions is going on in this case. So in fact, they are exactly the same distribution, but it is not normal, right? Because we see this skew, the distributions are not symmetric around the center. So we know that um, the normality assumption is being violated in this case, right? But because they are exactly the same um, distribution, um, we can see that the uh, assumption of equality of variance is okay, right? The variance should be the same between the two hypothetical population distributions. So in this case, the normality assumption is violated. On the other hand, so we have another two different uh, hypothetical population distributions. In this case, both assumptions are violated here. So this one is not normally distributed, uh, even though this one is. So the normality assumption for the independent samples t-test, you know, both groups, both groups should be 
normally distributed, right? If one of the group is not normally is not normally distributed, then the normality assumption is violated for the independent samples t test. And it looks like the equality of variance is also uh, you know violated here, right? The spread between the two distributions doesn't look the same. So in this case. Uh, we have um, the violation of both assumptions. So in this case, uh, you need to choose the respective uh, non-parametric alternative. And finally, you know, it seems like um, these two groups are um, normally distributed, um, assuming uh, that they're symmetrical around the you know, center. And but in terms of variance, they look different. This looks much slender compared to the population too, right? So we can see that um, the equality of variance assumption is being violated, whereas the normality assumption is okay. So I hope you now understand, you know, what it means to test the normality or the equality of variance between the two groups. Um, but this is not how we actually check those assumptions uh, in practice. There are, you know, kind of a different ways to check um, the normality assumption and equality of variances. And, you know, mostly we're going to use kind of a statistical way to um, check the normality and the equality of variance. So, um, so that was assumptions for the independent samples t-test. Uh, we have um, another t-test, right? Pair sample t-test, which has a slightly different um, assumptions. And actually it's uh, simpler than the independent samples t-test. So um, like the independent samples t-test, the data are, should be, uh, they, they should be measured at least at the interval level, right? Because again, you need to be able to calculate the mean and for the dependent samples and uh, the, the you know pair samples you only need to check the normality assumption but in this case it is the normality of the difference data set between the groups or conditions um, that are being compared so in this case it doesn't matter if this group is normally distributed or this group right you, you're not checking the normality of each group if they are related okay what you need to check is to is the normality of the difference between the two okay so here um so before you check the normality what you need to do for the pair samples is that you take the difference between the two groups and have the difference all right and then that difference data that's the um data you need to check the normality okay so that is the difference between the pair sample t-test and independent sample t-test and for dependent sample for pair samples um, because we only have difference data like single data right so there is uh, no equality of variance check because there's uh, no other data to compare the variance with so that is the only assumption you need to check for the uh, pair sample t test. So now let's look at how to check the normality assumption. Um, as I said, many parametric inferential tests uh, like you know, t test are built upon the assumption that the values of interest in the population are normally distributed. However, we uh, typically do not know the shape of the original population distribution from which our sample is drawn. So um, what we do uh, really is to check the normality of the sample instead, um, assuming that a sample from normally distributed population will also be normally distributed. So in general, there are two ways to check the normality of data, either visually or statistically. Even though Jamovi can do both, but we will only cover the statistical way to check the normality assumption because this is not the actual test anyway. And also, we just need just one result to show that you did check the. So there are different um, 
tests you can use to check the normality. And there's a different ways to actually um, bring up these tests in Jamovi. But I recommend, so, um, you know, you only need just one of them. And one of them is enough. And I recommend to use Shapiro work test. And so the statistical way to check the normality assumption is actually, uh, you know, uh, is subject to a same null hypothesis and it can testing principle because these are uh, the statistical uh, statistical tests too. So here the uh, null and the alternative hypothesis are following the null uh, in running the um, normality test is that the sample data are not statistically different from normal distribution or the sample data are more or less um, normally distributed. That is your null, right? So the alternative then that the sample data are statistically different from normal distribution, right? So this is a consistent with how you set up null and alternative hypothesis, right? So null is typically set up as there is no difference. So there's no difference between your data and normal distribution. And the alternative is that there is difference between your data and normal distribution. So in this case, you, you make the this, you know, same decision. Uh, the decision rule is still the same, alpha 0.05. So once you run, um, say, the Shapiro work test, then it'll give you the statistics and the um, respective p-value of the Shapiro work test. So you look at the p-value and compare it against alpha 0.05. And if the p-value from Shapiro work test is less than alpha 0.05, then you reject the null, right? What that means is that you reject the null, and that means you have strong evidence to support the alternative hypothesis, which in this case, you're in trouble. Uh, because then, you know, that is saying that the normal assumption is violated. You're saying that your data are statistically different from normal distribution, which is not what you want, right? If you want to run the parametric T test. So, p-value is greater than alpha 0.05, then that is when you say the normal assumption is met because now you fail to reject the null of no difference, right? So now you can say that your data are not statistically different from normal distribution. So in other words, um, it is more or less normally distributed, right? So that's what that means. And, you know, this is how to report the um, result from the Shapiro work test. So you have to report this um, whenever you run parametric t-test or para any, any parametric test, actually, wherever you need to check the uh, normality assumption. So the, uh, the SW, the Shapiro work, um, the normality test show that the data are uh, significantly or not significantly deviated from the normal distribution with P uh, uh, equals such and such. So you need to uh, report the exact p-value uh, wherever possible. If it is not, then you can just say either it's uh, greater than or less than alpha 0.05. That's all you have to say. You don't even have to report the statistics of um, Shapiro Wilk test. Um, so let's just look at how to run the Shapiro Wilk test in Jamovi. So. Um, well, what I have here is the um, the previous pilot data, the pilot visual acuity, uh, the American uh, jet fighter visual acuity, right? So let's just um, look at if this data are normally distributed or not by running the Shapiro work test. So if we go to anal uh, analysis tab, go to exploration and descriptives, see we have under statistics. There's a normality, right? And it has Shapiro work test. So you just tick this box. Um, in fact, let's just uh, do the QQ plot, right? I mean, you don't have to really know this, but just for the sake of illustration, I'm um, just showing you that you can do both in Jamovi. Now you move 
the variable and it'll give you the result. Right, so this is a, a QQ plot. Um, so what's on the y axis is a standardized residuals, uh, which is a deviation from the uh, theoretical quantile. So, so this is kind of a perfect normal distribution, and your data are standardized. Uh, so this is actually your data showing the standardized deviation from the theoretical quantile, right? So if these dots, right, are a cluster on this one-to-one -one line, right, this is what is called an identity line, right, then you can see that your data are more or less normally distributed, okay? So, you know, they are almost perfectly aligned on this line, right, except for the few dots um, at the uh, both tail ends. So these are the tail ends of the distribution. And it is typically the case that you see most deviation uh, is coming from the tail ends, but even the tails looks good, pretty good. Um, I mean, it is just um, natural because the data are actually simulated from the perfect normal distribution anyway, so it is only given. But why, where is the, Um, no. Here we Uh, I see. Okay, so it is only attached to. <laughs> so you cannot just request the um, Shapiro work test only. So let's just have other descriptive statistics. Yeah, so that is only when. So you need to actually request basic um, a descriptive statistic quantity, and then you can request the, uh, the normality check. Uh, it's kind of strange, but well, now we have our Shapiro work test result. So Shapiro work W, so W is the statistics of the Shapiro work test, which is 0 0.998. And the p value, right, at the respective p value that you will see this statistics is this, which is p equals 0.927. So if you compare this p value against alpha 0 0.05, then what do we do? we fail to reject the null. So that means the data, the pilot data, pilot visual acuity data are normally disputed. And this is how you um, check the normality using Jamovi. Um, and this is only for the single variable, but all these t-tests actually have the option to check the normality. See, now, see? Assumption checks, normality test, QQ plot, homogeneity test. So homogeneity test is the uh, the homogeneity of the variance, so equality of variance test. And you need to have two variables, right? Two groups, because this is for the independent samples t test. Um, what about pair samples? Again, uh, it comes with the assumption check. Right, so all you have to do is just to tick the box, the normality test. And again, you need to have two variables, two um, outcome measures from different groups or you know, conditions to be able to check this normality. Um, okay. Okay, so what do we do when the normality, is, normality assumption is violated? So if that happens, so what that means is that your Shapiro work test result p value is less than alpha 0.05. That means the normality assumption is violated. If that happens, then you have to choose the um, non-parametric alternative to the independent samples t test, which is called Mann and Whitney test. Um, Jamovi also has um, this test. Um, equipped uh, under the independent sample t-testing procedure. So um, it is just um, you know, 
a box to click to get this test result. And also, even if, so I, I mean, well, you, you do not have to check the normality when you have a very, very small sample size, like, you know, four to eight, because the normality assumption check, the normality test is really um, checking the distribution of the data, right? And, but if your sample size is just is, you know, small like this, then, I mean, you know, there is really no distribution to check. So do not even bother to check the normality when the sample size is this small and just uh, go straight to run the uh, non-parametric alternative to the independent samples T test. Right, so for independent samples T test, you need to check the quality of variances too. So that is an additional assumption that you need to check. Um, and this is also known as homoscedasticity or homogeneity of variance assumption. And this is only for the independent groups, um, the, the between subject data, right? Um, you don't have to check this assumption for the pair samples, right? And to check the quality of variances, um, another statistic called the Levine's statistics is used. And again, because this is a statistical test, this is subject to same null hypothesis significant testing procedure. So, what you want to show is that um, the variances in each group should be roughly equal, statistically speaking. So the null is that the variances in each samples, sample is not statistically different or they're the same, right? They're not different. And the alternative hypo hypothesis is that the variances in each group is statistically different. So this is a consistent with how we set up null and alternative hypothesis, right? Um, but this is not um, in a serious assumption when it is violated compared to the normality assumption violation. If it is violated, then there's another parametric, call, parametric test called Welch's t-test, uh, which um, takes account into uh, the differences in variance between the two groups. So let's just look at um, how to um, run this assumption check in Jamovi. So here is another familiar data set, um, sample log more data, which we already um, um, have looked at before. Now we have three outcome variables, which are visual acuities in different eyes. So right eye visual acuity, left eye visual acuity, both eye visual acuity, and we have one grouping variable, which is gender. So if you are to compare these outcome variables based on the gender, then this is an example of independent samples t-test because the male and female, these two groups are independent to each other, right? You cannot be both male and female at the same time, at any given time, right? So this is an example of um, independent groups. And to check the, the quality of variance, then you wanna, okay, so before we run, so students t-test, the, the by default, um, it'll, you know, um, run the student's t-test, right? That is, the, uh, that is our parametric independent samples t-test. And we also have the option to run Welch's t-test in case the homogeneity test. So this is the homogeneity of variance test, right? Levine's test. In case this um, assumption, the homogeneity of variance is assumption is uh, violated, then you can run the Welch's t-test. When do we run Man and Whitney U test? That's when the normality of the data are, uh, is violated, right? So that's the normality. Um, so let's just uh, tick this box and see what it is giving us. So let's just uh, you know, throw in the, um, the right eye and split by gender. That is our grouping variable. And there is uh, the homogeneity of uh, variance test. 
So it's just another assumption check, right? And it says Levine's. And so this is a Levine's test. So F is the actual test statistics of Levine's test, which is 1.53. And degrees of freedom is 1. Um, so this looks like a 2 minus. Oh, no. Oh, this is the uh, yeah, um, a between subject, between subject term. And this is error term, right? And this is actually the, um, the total number of data, minus 2. And this is total number of groups, minus 1, right? And then the resulting p-value, so the likelihood that you will uh, see the statistics as extreme as this one or more extreme is this, 0.219. Now, you compare this p-value against alpha 0.05. And what do we do? It is p value, this p value is greater than 0.05, right? So we fail to reject the null of no difference in variance, right? So that means the equality of variance assumption is actually met. So we're safe with um, this assumption. So um, let's check the normality assumption. Well, we're going to just take a look at this uh, next time. But the normality test in this independent sample t-test is a little bit different because it is giving you only a single um, Shapiro-Wilk test result. So the way uh, Jamovi tested the normality of uh, the outcome variable is a little different, but there is kind of a different way to test the normality of each group data. Um, but it should give you the same result in terms of normality test. But um, at this point, I just want to show you how to check the um, equality of variance using Jamovi for the independent samples t-test.